So Preston North End have sacked Alex Neal with nearly four years in charge, nearing the end of his fourth consecutive season with Preston North End. It's all going on at Deep Down right now. I'm going to talk about my reaction here. Wait, what? We got a new intro? Well, cue the intro. Man, that feels good. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. So a very quick video today. I'm going to talk about my instant reaction to Preston sacking Alex Neal. Now, Alex Neal was the longest serving championship manager in this season at all. And he's just been sacked. It just shows the brutality of the championship. And on average, managers tend to survive less than a year in charge in the championship. And the fact he survived nearly four years is quite staggering. Now we need to talk about Preston and just talk about what has led to his sacking. In fact, let's read of what Preston have to say. Preston North End can confirm that it has today parted with the services of its manager, Alex Neal. Parted with the services? What on earth is that terminology? I guess that kind of means mutual consent or something. Alex joined the club in the summer of 2017 and he leaves us with our thanks and very best wishes for the future. It is the intention of Frankie McAvoy who will take up the position of interim head coach and the work with Steve Thompson, Mike Pollier and Paul Gallagher in taking the team for the remaining eight games of the season. Okay, so it's clear that they're not intending to replace the manager midway through this season. Now, I think they're going to announce the replacement in or around next season or just before the new season starts. Preston, as a team in general, I don't think they'll mind me saying they're not really the most decorative team of whatever. Like, if you were to name a championship club, I don't think many people would literally spurt out Preston, really, as being one of the so-called bigger clubs in that division. But Preston, I think since 2002, I think that was when they nearly got to the Premier League again. It was the closest they've ever got there under David Moyes. Since then, it's been a gradual decline and they've had financial troubles over the years. They did get relegated from the championship in 2010-11. And in that time, they were having Darren Ferguson and Phil Brown in charge of their clubs. Then they spent four seasons in League One, going through a couple of managers, eventually finding Simon Grayson, who they managed to snatch away from Leeds United. He got Preston, stabilised things, and got them promoted back to the Championship. Both Preston fans will say to this day that it was one of their favourite ever games they've seen ever but even from the way for how emphatic they were in that game as well then simon grayson took them up to the championship and he set a pretty high bar he was getting preston most definitely pushing above their weight and he set up a fantastic squad with that preston squad unfortunately sunderland came calling and that was when alex neal took over in the summer of 2017 so the 2017-18 season was the first season Alex Neal was in charge of. He started his managerial career in the age of 31, which some football players, they were still continuing playing football, but he managed Hamilton Academical, getting them to really punch above their weight, really. Then he joined Norwich City, and he was given a squad that was just relegated from the Premier League, and it was a very strong squad. I remember they had Ruddy and Gar, they had Wes Houlihan in his prime, Cameron Jerome up front, Tetty who was still looking good. Nathan Redmond, who was a revelation in the championship at that time as well. So Alex Neal already had a fantastic squad in front of him and he had to rely on a playoff final to get past Ita Karankas Middlesbrough to get Norwich up. And in the Premier League, Norwich were pretty good on the eye, but unfortunately they did get relegated in 19th place in the 2015-16 season. And unfortunately, Neal did not keep his job as Norwich manager. He left. And that is when Preston were a little bit of a crisis. You know, they had a fantastic squad on their hands under Simon Grayson. You got Preston two consecutive 11th place finishes with a really exciting squad in front of him. He leaves for Sunderland, of course, and Alex Neal comes in in the 2017-18 season. And already he had an instant impact, improving the team's positions by four places, getting them to finish seventh place. 
agonizingly just missing out in the top six. It was Gary Raritz Derby that took the last top six place. And they were very, very unfortunate not to get in the top six. I think they even won their final championship game as well in the final day of the season. So Preston couldn't do any more, which was a real shame for them. Then next season, they did have a bit of a drop off. And this was when they lost Jordan Hugel. I think they had Lemecha up front where they tried to reinvent some of the ways that they were playing. And it was just a big struggle. Preston for a lot of that 2018-19 season, they were in around in the bottom three. But then a turnaround in the second half of the season ultimately saved Preston. And then they finished in around 14th place. It was their lowest league position in the championship since getting promoted from League One. Then in the next season, which was 1920, now obviously in the transfers, they lost Callum Robinson to Sheffield United at the time. So a lot of that squad that got Preston up and got them really comfortable in the championship was starting to get picked away. But they had an incredible start, which they don't tend to do, Preston. They managed to get into the top of the table in November 2019. And that was when Preston fans were at their peak. We were thinking, you know, what on earth was Preston doing? They were being the surprise packet of the championship Unfortunately, though, know, they do go on the slump and injuries did not help them. They eventually finished ninth place in that season, which was a substantive improvement from their 14th place last season. And then we've caught up to this season. Now, Preston, for me, in terms of results, have been quite erratic. You've seen them go on a good streak away from home, but at home, they've been absolutely woeful. Here's the home table overall. In 19 home matches, Preston have only won five of them, losing 10 of them, losing over half of their home games, which is not great for Preston whatsoever, really. By direct contrast, away from home, they're in the top 10 away from home, and unfortunately, recently, they've actually lost four away games in a row. So what was really strong form for Preston with their away record has just been completely demolished with four away defeats in a row. Their 2-0 defeat against Middlesbrough was appalling with Jason Story scoring that very, very unfortunate own goal. Then they had that 4-0 away defeat from Cardiff, which was embarrassing as well for Preston as well. Gradually, over time, Preston's form just completely deteriorated. And a big distraction was the transfer window. They lost Ben Pearson, they lost Darnell Fisher as well, and they lost Ben Davies. Three first-team players that were really important in that Preston squad. And... They did try and replace Neil Got Ben Whiteman in. I think what's been a big downfall, actually, from that 2017-18 season where the Preston did so well, obviously, as I said, with all the players they lost, like Jordan Hugo, they lost it at the beginning. Alex Neil has not really replaced and has managed to get a good value from it. If you look at Brentford, when they lose players, for instance, like Morpé, they'll get Ollie Watkins and switch into that position. When they lose Watkins, they get Ivan Tony in. And now look at Brentford. If Preston operated differently and had a similar impact for what Brentford have had when they lose their players, Preston would most definitely keep up their consistency and be up there because I think Alex Neal is a capable enough manager. But I've seen his quotes recently and he seems so frustrated. He doesn't know what his best 11 is. He's grown frustrated and has lacked the trust and the reliability for what he feels might be his strongest 11. And that is not good to have those sorts of conflicts. This table pretty much says it all. This is the form table starting off the new year. Three wins in 17 matches is relegation form, really. 10 defeats in the new year as well. Only Huddersfield have picked up less points in the new year than Preston. They've also drawn with Wickham, who, of course, are cut adrift in the bottom of the championship. So their form has really deteriorated in the new year. And that really doesn't help with the amount of players they did lose in the January transfer window and how little quality and money they got from it and they replaced and reinvest. And that has been a really big problem with Preston. And I think over time, when they peaked in that 2017-18 season, over time, there was just a slight gradual decline. In that 1920 season last year, I think Preston overachieved, personally. Daniel Johnson and Ben Pearson were absolutely incredible. Patrick Bauer as well at the back has been incredible. They've been unfortunate with Patrick Bauer this season. He has been injured for a lot of it. But you cannot deny the amount of goals they have been conceding, though. But also look at the amount of goals they scored since New Year. Only nine goals since New Year. That is astoundingly bad. And they've really, really struggled with it. And that's what happens when you're going to have Reese Jacobson and Ched Evans as your strike partnership. This gone are the days where they relied on Jordan Hugo, Callum Robinson and all of those players. 
they're just not in the same caliber for me. I think a lot of Preston fans' reaction is going to be that they're sad that Neil's gone because he's a pretty likable manager for me and you get that in terms of his passion and how hard he works for the club. And for the fact he's been there for a long time as well, you know, Preston were having a great period under him. But I think this change was inevitable following that there has been a substantive decline. Only nine points above the relegation zone. Frankie McAvoy has got Norwich, Swansea and Brentford back to back to back in his first three games, which is quite daunting. And what could be scary about that? You, of course, Rotherham have got their four games in hand, had a fantastic win over Bristol City. But also, if the teams below them start picking up their form as well, Preston may unintentionally get dragged into it. If you remember the points total you needed to survive last season, you needed 49. Preston have not achieved 49 points yet. I do think the final two relegation places are not going to have that benchmark. But that final relegation place, where Rotherham have got over one point per game and Birmingham have got one point per game precisely, Preston may need to worry about their position right now. It would need to take a huge collapse for Preston to get relegated for me. But it is not entirely safe. And I do think two wins, I think, will save Preston for me. But then they get it easier off a bit. Stoke yeah, might be okay. Then they've got Derby, which I think is a huge game for them. Then Coventry, which is also big. Then Barnsley, which will be tough. And then Forrest to end it off. So they've got four of the top six, Preston, in their last eight games. That's 50% of their final eight games. So it's not a very easy run in at the end of the season for Preston. To look at all the results for Preston, they start off this season slow. They get a great away point against Norwich, but Norwich was still fighting their feet in the championship. They get their first win in pretty dramatic circumstances against a Brentford side away from home. And then they get back-to-back -back away wins. So as you can see, Preston, their first three wins came from away games you're actually going to have to go all the way to november the 21st to get their first home win which was against sheffield wednesday where they themselves went down to 10 men it wasn't an overly convincing performance by preston north end but then you get a couple of bad results blackburn and watford both losing those games by a three goal margin then suddenly a fantastic result against promotion chasing bournemouth three two away from home that just completely describes their season. Erratic. They have poor results falling by unbelievable results. And it's difficult to keep up with Preston. And I think it's just taken too much of a toll. And just its lack of consistency is what has cost Alex Neal personally. Then Alex Neal from around December time does all right, you know. You know, he gets a bit consistent. Okay, Luton and Barnsley with both defeats. But the rest of it, he got three wins in a row against Bristol City, Derby and Coventry. But to be fair, those were pretty winnable fixtures on paper. Then Forest and Bristol City again, where I think they shouldn't have lost either one of those games, really, based on performances. And then you get to the new year, where it really starts to turn apart. Of course, as I said, three wins in those 17 games, which was Blackburn, which to be fair was an all right performance. Huddersfield as well, which was their best performance, but this was a Huddersfield side, very, very low in confidence. And of course, the other one was their away win at Birmingham, where they themselves were also a team low in confidence. Overall with Preston, they've just not overly been so impressive this season. They've had a couple of incredible results, but they've just been too inconsistent. I think that is what has cost Alex Neal's job. One thing I do have faith with Alex Neal, I think he will find a job elsewhere. He's only 39 years old, and I really do hope for him in the future, he does get a couple of jobs now let's look at the managerial odds now these odds could be changing all the time as i said i only heard about the news a couple of hours ago neil harris for preston um i'm not too sure with that if i'm going to be honest with you he's a, got a completely different manager he'd be good to have a stable back line but i don't think the football would be great neil nennon uh, i don't know about that really Derek McInnes is an interesting one. He's been someone to be keeping a little bit of an eye off. Obviously, he has left Aberdeen this season. Maybe an option they could go for. I, I would be interested to see how he goes in the championship. Gareth Ainsworth, obviously former Preston player, currently the Wickham manager. Could he be tempted to go elsewhere if Preston do want to get Gareth Ainsworth? Michael Aberton as well. But that is my overall reaction to Preston and Alex Neal leaving the club by mutual consent. I'm going to call it by mutual consent because I don't know what sort of terminology the club is describing. But let me know if your guys' views in the comments down below. If you guys like what you see, please make sure you do give this video a like. Tremendously so appreciate it. If you haven't done, please subscribe to the channel. It'd really make my day. And please share my channel to as many people as you can. All of that would really make my day. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for signing out of this video. And as always, take care, everyone.